Hi, today we're going to make a bubble fish. Um, so we're working with both boro tube and a little bit of soft soda glass as well for the fish itself. So you'll see at the end of the demonstration why it's called a bubble fish, but it's great practice and skills for blowing and a little bit of manipulation as well. So, should we try that again? Manipulation. So, start off with, um, I want to do this on the minor burner. Give yourself a reasonable flame because you're going to be heating some boro tubing. Obviously, to straighten up this point, so obviously, put yourself a point first. And with this one, I'll just straighten it up because it's a little bit off centre. And then about three quarters of an inch to an inch long. You can either take this off and seal it, uh, or pull the next point, which I'll probably pull the next point, just because it's a little bit of practice for you. It's great to get into a routine of preparing the glass for the next point. So again, just heat it about half an inch of the tube, and this is just. 14 to 16 mil boro tubing, nothing special, nothing too large. And again, as you turn in the glass outside the flame, start to stretch the point, and you're creating another point to hold the next one with. A couple of seconds to let it set, <coughs> and then just took the point off there. So that's ready for the next one. So to prepare this bubble, we just need a pair of tweezers, and we're going to clean up the end of the point. So take off the end and then blow it back out round again. And then leaning the glass back in the flame, as you're turning it round, it should start to build up on itself again. So we want to thicken the glass up a little bit, just like when you were blowing the Christmas baubles. But this is actually easier because it's such a small diameter glass. And keep turning it round, let it fall back in on itself and thicken up. And then we're just going to blow it out into a little bubble, around about an inch diameter. And so there's your, your little bubble. Eventually when it cools down, we'll form a little hook on the bottom. So we'll just leave that down there for now, let it cool down. So going on to making the, the fish, this fish is called Bob. Uh, we've got nice colours, we've got cobalt blue, dark green, definitely yellow, some orange and red and white. Uh, we've got a pair of mashers, we've got a pair of tweezers. Now if you've got the tweezers with the serrated edges, it makes a really good pattern for the fins. And we've also got a razor tool. And the razor tool we're going to use just for forming the lips on the fish. So starting with a little bit of cobalt blue. Just going to clean the end up of the rod. It's always good to get into the habit of cleaning these bits away. And I'll turn this flame down a little bit. And I'm just going to fold the glass over so you can do it either way. I need to build the glass up to about the size of a broad bean. Do it either way you want. If you want to start from the end, melting it down, let gravity build it up. Or what I tend to do with the thinner rods is just to heat it about an inch back, three quarters of an inch back, and let the glass fold over and then just keep working it in the flame as it goes over. And I'm going to add a little pattern to this. I'm going to take some white glass and just start to pre-warm the white behind it. So hopefully we'll stop it cracking and shattering. But as we're just getting to the size of this bean size now, I want to wrap some white around it to form like a white marbling effect. And then I'm going to flatten this out. So if you imagine making like a little lollipop. So nice and round, nice and hot. Underneath the flame with the mashers. Keep turning it until you've got it relatively stiff again. And then just flatten this out to the diameter of the rod. So it'll be about five millimeters thick. And don't forget just to flame polish either both sides where you've flattened it with your mashers. You're going to get little fingerprints where they've cooled rapidly. So polish those off, just a much better effect. And again, just take a couple of seconds, just to let the glass go back to being hard again. And then we need to put the, the eyes on the fish. So I just need to clean this end up a little bit. So I've got a little bit of blue on from when I did the marbling. 
So, you need a good pair of goggly eyes. And again, just tuck that on. And again, around here. So you've got big, bulbous white eyes. A little bit of black for the centre of the eyes. And these are great for using up oddments of glass as well. So if you've got any shorts or broken rods and things like that, because you're using so little, you can, clear, you can use these old oddments up quite happily. So, what I think is a great idea for the bubble fish is to sit down to make some for your grandkids, for your kids, for your neighbours, or your neighbours' kids. And then we can present these to them for Christmas as a little a little cute set. Instead of choppers, healthy option for chocolate. It's the pet that doesn't need feeding. So put a blob on for its lips, warm this on. Make sure you've got nice good seals to the body all the time. And then as it starts to cool, use your razor tool to give yourself a nice pair of googly lips. Then we'll go for the bottom fin, and as I was saying, great to present these to the youngsters, or the not so young people in the community, that uh, enjoy having a, a little fish in a jam jar. So again with the tweezers, give this a little pinch. And this is where I said about the tweezers with the, the pattern on the bottom. It was a great pattern for the fin. And then just pull off a little bit. So the top loop is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a, well it actually is a loop rather than a fin. So heat up a little bit more. Again making sure that you've preheated and you've got the top of the fish's head nice and hot so that the glass just flows in there and you get a good seal. And then start to pull off, not too fast, because you want this loop to be nice and thick. reattach and stretch this out a little bit more and that forms your loop and then with an old stringer or a little bit of a, a point on glass just gently warm the lip and put a little cold seal on and this will give you a seal for around about two minutes it's all you need there you don't need a permanent seal it's just to hold it while you finish off the fish's tail and again back to yellow, so you're going to do the same as you do with the bottom fin, but put one top and one bottom, and then pinch it with the, the tweezers, and stretch them out. And this is a throwback to many, many years that I spent doing production glass blowing, where we made these regularly for our businesses all over the world. So I'm going to pull these out, but I think it's time to get a bit of a, it would do a bit of a comeback. So quite happily see these appearing on websites and market stores and craft shows all over. So there we go. That's the little Bob, your little bubble fish. So we pop them in the kiln. In my case, we'll put them in some cooling bottles. Go back to your bubble that you made earlier on. So this is the bubble. And it should be cool enough to hold now. And then turning your propane down a little bit to get a reasonably fine flame. We're going to heat just the shoulder where it comes up into the point and form a little nice little loop there. Now you might find it easier to use hot fingers. Or in my case, I will have hot fingers when I finish this. Because don't spend too long on it because the glass where the bubble's blown up is relatively thin walled. So it heats up quite quickly. So you form a little loop. There we go. And again, into the kiln, into the cooling bubbles. So, turn these up. Set the safety glasses up. And, in good old Blue Peter style, we have one that I made earlier. And out he comes. And so here's Bob. And here's a bubble that I made earlier. And then the reason we call him Bob is because you hook them together and you put them in the jam jar. Push Bob. Here's Bob's girlfriend. This is Sue Bob. There's a theme. And Sue Bob goes in there. And we'll put them together for a little while so they can say hello to each other. There you 
you go, you've got Bob and Sue Bob, the bubble fish.